This is your video for week four, and in this video we'll talk about the format and some other important information about the exam, and we'll also go through some review problems. So first of all, the exam is to be taken during week four, sometime between Wednesday and Friday. It has to be completed by 4 p.m. on Friday. The reason for that time is that that's when the testing center on the Scotts Bluff campus closes on Fridays. This is a paper and pencil exam, not an online exam, and it does have to be proctored. To have it proctored, you may go to the testing center in Scotts Bluff, or you can make similar arrangements at the other campuses in Sydney and Alliance. You do have to make an appointment to take this test. One of the reasons is that the testing center tends to be very full on Fridays, and if you wait and go in on Friday without an appointment, you may not be able to take the test. Please be sure to make an appointment with the testing center staff or with the Sydney Alliance campus staff by Tuesday so that you'll know exactly when you're supposed to be taking the test. If you're in another location that you can't use any of those facilities, you are responsible for finding a suitable proctor and sending me their contact info, which needs to include their name, title, email address, and phone number. You need to send this to me at least two days before you plan to take the exam. I need time to be able to contact them, to send them the test, and to make sure they understand the responsibilities of proctoring the test for you. Some examples of suitable proctors are teachers and librarians at public libraries. If you have any questions about whether someone would be a suitable proctor, just contact me and ask. For the exam, it covers all of chapters one and two and you will have 60 minutes to complete it. You can use a scientific or graphing calculator, but no other electronic devices. You can't use your phone for a calculator, you can't use your iPad or other kind of tablet or laptop. Please do make sure to bring a pencil and your calculator when you come to take the exam. Now one other thing about the exam, notice on there that it doesn't say anything about bringing a sheet of formulas or a cheat sheet. That's because there's all this stuff that needs to be memorized for this exam. So for your notes for this week, I gave you spaces to write all of these important identities and facts. I'm not going to do this in the video. Go back through your notes and find, for example, the trig ratios here using X, Y, and R or in a right triangle, and there's a whole nother page of identities. So we've got the reciprocal identities, the three Pythagorean identities, the quotient identities, the co-function identities. Then another thing you need to know is for the different quadrants, what are the signs of the three main trig functions? Remember for that we had the memory trick of all students take calculus. And then we also had the trig function values for quadrant one for the, our special angles. Remember there was a trick for this also for the sine and cosine. And then the reference angles. So if you have an angle in one of these quadrants, how you find the reference angle. So you need to fill out those things on your own for these notes. So I'm going, I'm going to go through some problems and I've got these split up into not necessarily the different sections in the book, more about what they relate to. I'm not going to do every type of problem in this review. You do also have a set of review problems to do this week, and that has more different types of problems. In this review, I'm trying to go through the things that I know a lot of people tend to struggle with. So the first topic I want to talk about is using geometry facts. These are things like complementary angles, supplementary angles, vertical angles. So first of all, if we've got two angles A and B that we know are complementary, and we have an expression for each angle measure, and we want to find the actual angle measure for each angle, the fact that the two angles are complementary tells us that this expression and this expression have to add up to 90 degrees. What we can do with that is write an equation, just taking those two expressions, adding them, and that should equal 90 degrees. From there we would take this and solve it for x. 
we can combine our like terms, the 2x and the 6x, to get 8x. And we can combine the 25 and the 17 to get 42. Then we can subtract 42 from each side. That's going to give us 8x is equal to 48. And then if we divide both sides by 8, we get x equals 6. Now remember to read the directions carefully. This actually asks you to find the measures of angle A and B. So we want to take our 6 for x and plug it back into our two expressions to find the two angle measures. So A would be 2 times 6 plus 25, which would give us 37 degrees. And B we know is supposed to be complementary to this one, so we could find it by subtracting this from 90. We could also check that by plugging 6 for x into this expression. That's going to give us 53 degrees. 53 degrees and 37 degrees do add up to 90, so those two are complementary. Next problem has to do with the three angles in a triangle adding up to 180. In this problem, we have two of the angles. We're trying to find the third one. So we know that 73.8 degrees plus 25.6 degrees plus our unknown angle, which I'm going to call x, have to add up to 180 degrees. So we could add those two together. Adding these two gives us 99.4 degrees. We're going to subtract the 99.4 from the 180 and that gives us 80.6 degrees for x. That's the third angle in the triangle. In this problem, we've got two parallel lines and a transversal, and we're trying to find the measures of these two angles. In geometry terms, these two would be alternate interior angles, and one of the geom geometry facts we talked about is that alternate interior angles are equal in measure. Here where we have the expression for the measure of each angle, we know that A and B are actually equal, so we're going to take those two expressions and set them equal to each other. And then we're solving for X. We end up with X equals 2. Then we're trying to find the measures of angles A and B. So to get A, I'm plugging in 2 for X in this expression. That gives me 15 degrees for A. And I already said that A was equal to B, so I should also get 15 when I plug 2 in for X here. And that does turn out to be 15 degrees. Here's another problem that has to do with geometry facts. This one actually uses the idea of similar triangles. But in order to know that, you really need to draw the picture. We have a tree that's casting a shadow 26 feet long. So in other words, here's our sun up here, and the shadow that is casting from the tree ends up being 26 feet long. And at the same time, so with the sun at the same angle, we have a four foot tall fence. and the shadow that it's casting is one and a half feet. But the idea is that the angle of elevation of the sun in both of these is the same. So in both of these triangles, we have a right angle here, and we have the same angle here as we do here. Since we know two of the angles in the triangles, that means we also would know the third one. So this angle has to be equal to this angle. Since we've got the correspondence between all three angles of the two triangles, that means they're similar triangles. And that tells us that the sides are proportional. And what we're trying to find in this problem is the height of the tree. This was our tree over here. So let's call this H, and that's the value that we're trying to find. We can set up a proportion between this side H and the height of the fence. And that should equal the length of this shadow divided by the length of this shadow.
One way we could set up this equation would be h over 4 equals 26 over 1.5. Then we want to solve that equation for h. We can cross multiply. That gives us h times 1.5 equals 4 times 26. And if we solve this for h, we end up with 69.3. So our final answer is that the tree is 69.3 feet tall.